I have another recent reads video for you guys. Yeah. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I hope your day has been filled with sunshine and rainbows because that's nice. Books 26 through 30. I've read 30 books this year so far and I'm very happy about that. The first book I'm going to talk about today is Flights and Chimes and Mysterious Times by Emma Trayvon. This story is a middle grade novel about a young boy named Jack who finds himself in a alternate version of his home which is London and in this alternate London everything and everyone is mechanical which is pretty cool. The ruler of this alternate London is called The Lady and she is searching for a new perfect son, whatever that means. So obviously she wants Jack. I did like this book and I found it fun, but I did have quite a few problems with it. What I did like though was the world building. It was well done to an extent. I just really enjoyed reading about all of the mechanical people. I guess that's what you would call them. And there were a lot of interesting side characters that I wish were in this book more, but weren't. What I didn't like about this book was that I was left with so many plot holes. So many questions I had were left unanswered and that annoyed me so much. In this world, why is everyone mechanical? Why, why is everyone a robot? I did not get an answer for that. And then how did this world come about in general? How did the alternate London become an alternate London? Nothing was said about that and that really annoyed me. I thought the resolution to this book was okay except that I just couldn't get past it because like I said there were so many unanswered questions. That being said I did have a lot of fun with this book and I do think a lot of kids will like it. I just the unanswered questions I just want to know why everything is the way it is. After that I read The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oaks. This is now one of my favorite books that I've read this year. If Orange is the New Black and The Village had a love child it would be this book. Sort of. Kind of. Not really. Never mind. This book centers on our main character Minnow. She is 17 years old and she is currently in a juvenile detention facility. And here she slowly unveils the events of her life of being a part of a cult. The Kavinian cult to be exact. They took everything away from her and when she rebelled they cut off her hands with an axe chopped off her hands. For a young adult book, I wasn't expecting the writing to be as beautiful and haunting as it was. The characters were all fleshed out well, especially Minnow. Minnow is a young girl who has gone through the worst things you can imagine, but she went through something in particular that I think everyone can relate to on some level, and because of that I think anyone who reads this will take something away from this book. It will make you think. Days will pass and you will still be thinking about this book. Religion is a heavy, heavy topic in this book considering the cult in this book, but it was handled really well despite that fact. The only thing I think a lot of people might not like about this book is that there are some unanswered questions left at the end, but I feel that with the message this book is trying to get across to you, those unanswered questions shouldn't really matter at the end. I don't know if that makes sense. For being such a dark book, it ended on a slightly positive note, so that surprised me. But having read this book, it left me an emotional wreck. I couldn't recommend it enough. I love this. After that, I read the storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin, and I buddy read this with Sue from the Restricted section. Sue is awesome. I had so much fun buddy reading this with her, and if you have not, checked out the restricted section, you should go subscribe to them. I will leave a link in the description. This book is about AJ Fickery. His life kind of sucks at the moment. He is a widow who lives alone. He owns a bookstore, but that bookstore is having terrible sales and that might have to do with his attitude. He's kind of a prick. And to top it all off, his prized possession, which is a rare Edgar Allan Poe book, just got stolen. So that happened. And his life turns upside down when a mysterious package is left at his store. And that mysterious package might be a child. I want to tell you I like this book, but I honestly had a lot of problems with it. I can see why a lot of people love it, but dang it, the problems. Me and Sue, I think both felt the same way. So I know I'm not the only one. But let me tell you what I liked about this book first, because let's start this on a positive note. <laughs> the beginning of this book hooked me. It made me laugh and the main character was highly unlikable, but I couldn't help but want to read more about him. The book early on leaves you with giant unanswered questions and as you're reading this you're desperately just wanting to know the answers to these unanswered questions. And with saying that I found this book really hard to put down when I was buddy reading it with Sue because we were only 
only reading a couple chapters a day, but I wanted to keep reading and I didn't want to stop. Now, on to the problems. This book is way too fast. I'd be reading this book completely engrossed and then boom, time jump. 10 years later. What? No! Why would you do that? <laughs> there were multiple time jumps in this book and they infuriated me to no end. And this segues into my next problem and because of the time jumps, I couldn't really connect with any of the side characters. There were so many side characters and a lot of them were super interesting but I felt that I couldn't quite connect with them or get to know them because there were so many freaking time jumps. You only really get to know AJ but even then, his character development is questionable. The last thing I didn't like about this book was the ending. It was such a cop-out, I hated it. I did not sign up for a Nicholas Sparks novel, and that's what it left me with. I see why a lot of people like this book. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's heartwarming, it will rip out your heart and shatter it into a million pieces, but it's still annoying, and there are problems and I'm annoyed by them. But besides that, thank you, Sue, for reading this book with me. I had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to reread Jurassic Park with you guys. It's gonna be so much fun, and I am excited because dinosaurs. After that, I read Serafina by Rachel Hartman. This book is about a kingdom where humans and dragons are at peace and live amongst one another. Although the peace is threatened when one of the members of the royal family is murdered and it's thought that a dragon did it, so. This book is told from the point of view of Serafina. She is a young girl who is a musician for the royal court. And she goes on an investigation with the prince to uncover the murder and whatnot. All the while, Serafina is trying to keep a secret of hers under wrapped because if anyone found out about her secret, chaos would probably follow. And the secret is that she may or may not be half dragon. I enjoyed this book a lot more than I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to hate it, but I'm so happy that I enjoyed it. That's not to say that I didn't have problems because I had a lot of problems with this book, but I'm hoping the second book does a good job with resolving those problems that I have. I love the world building of this book. You could tell the author put so much effort into this kingdom. The murder mystery aspect of this novel I was not expecting and I love murder mysteries, so I was really invested in that plot of the story. This book did such a good job with showing the tension between the humans and the dragons. Yes, there is a treaty. Yes, they're technically at peace, but there is so much prejudice that humans have towards the dragons that you could just, you can see the tension, but there's such a fine line that can easily be crossed and people are just waiting for this treaty to break so that a war can come of it. What I don't like about this book though is that this book is extremely hard to get into. You have to read at least a hundred pages to feel fully invested and I think that's why a lot of people don't like this book. The other problem I have is that we only really get to know Serafina. We don't get to know too much about all of the other characters but I think in the next book hopefully we get to delve more into other characters but overall I did enjoy this book. I will be picking up the second one hopefully soon. And the last book I'm going to talk about today is Welcome to the Monkey House by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a collection of short stories by Kurt Vonnegut, 25 to be exact. Kurt Vonnegut, what is there not to like? This book was something. It was wonderful. His satiric voice, his dark humor, his crazy imagination just made me not want to put this book down. I was reading it while I read Serafina, but once I finished that, I was about halfway through this book and then I just read the rest in one sitting because I couldn't stop. I'm going to be rereading this, hopefully, with a friend in the near future. I am excited because there were so many good short stories in here. My favorite short stories in here were Epicoc, Epicac, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's about this machine and it's wonderful. And then Tom Edison's Shaggy Dog was so hilarious and I loved it a lot. Miss Temptation was really good too. And the other one that I really, really loved was the Euphio question. That one was a trip. Now I have no more Vonnegut on my shelf to read, so I need to go and get more. I've only read Cat's Cradle, Slaughterhouse, and now this. So if you have any recommendations, you should leave those in the comments below because I don't know what to pick up next. And those are books 26 through 30 that I've read recently. If you've read any of these books, leave your thoughts and opinions down below. We could chit chat, you know what to do. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!